Hello and welcome to the Adventure Toolkit Example Reel number 12. My name is Glenn Storm and I'm from Hot Iron Productions. Today we're going to talk about tools from the Interaction folder, starting with the HUD Manager. The HUD Manager tool is designed to display images on the viewport. Specifically, it's designed to display textures over a portion of the viewport. It can also fade these images up or down and it can fade them in color or transparency and during the fade it can transition them in position and in scale but we'll go over that in just a minute first let's look at the properties of the HUD manager the first property is a an array called HUD textures this is a list of the textures this HUD manager can display and for this example I've defined two of them these are transparency images with a white border and some white text. One says HUD element A, the other one says HUD element B. After HUD textures is a property called HUD depth. And similar to what we had for captions manager and overlay fader, HUD depth deals with the layer order of the HUD elements on the viewport. This HUD depth is a number that corresponds to the depth at which they will display. So for example, if you have an overlay fader with a HUD depth of zero, and you want these HUD images to display behind it, then you will need to set this HUD depth to a number that's greater than that, such as one. If, however, you want the HUD item to appear in front of the overlay fader set at a depth of zero, then you'll want to set this HUD depth to a number less than that, such as negative one. The next property is HUD top, and what we're describing here is a position in vertical screen space. It's a number between zero and one, where zero is the top edge of the screen, and one is the bottom edge of the screen. The next property is HUD left, and this is also describing the position of the image on screen where zero is the leftmost image, or leftmost side of the viewport, and one is the rightmost edge of the viewport. In this example, I want to have our image appear at the top left corner, so I'll leave it at zero, zero. The next property is HUD width, and this describes the scale of the image while keeping the proportions of the image the same. So we're only going to have the width to deal with. Again, this is a proportion of horizontal screen space. So with 0.4, I'm describing that I want the image to cover 40% of the viewport in horizontal screen space. So it'll sit in the top left corner, as I say, and it will come out about 40%, which is right about here. The next property is fade duration. And if this HUD manager is signaled to fade the HUD image, it will do so over this duration in seconds. I'm going to leave it at the default of one second. The next property is fade color. This is the start color of the fade. So I've, I would like our image to fade up and be white during the entire fade. So I've set this from a default of black to white but I've kept the transparency all the way down to zero because I do want it to begin the fade fully transparent and fade up to opaque. The next property is fade top. Again, we're describing where, it, the, uh, where the image is at the beginning of the fade. And again, we're describing uh, vertical screen space. I actually would like to keep the image in the top left corner, so both fade top and fade left are going to be left at their default of zero. You'll notice that they uh, have corresponding properties fade top curve and fade left curve. This is because if you do not want the fade transition from the top or left uh, settings to uh, occur linearly, but you'd like the transition to have something more interesting, you can define that with their curve editor. So you can have it slide in fast and then slow to a stop. So that's fade top, fade top curve, fade left, and fade left curve. The next property is fade width, and again, I don't actually want to change the uh, position or scale 
of our image as it fades up from transparent. So I'm going to match our HUD width here at fade width and set it to 0 0.4. But if I did change it and I would like it to uh, interpolate uh, something other than linearly, I could define that with this fade width curve. Okay, that's the HUD manager. The HUD manager does not work alone. It needs a HUD trigger in order to activate which image to display. And that's done with the HUD trigger. Let's look at that tool now. The HUD trigger is designed to call up the HUD manager and uh, ask it to display the next HUD item. Here are the properties. The first is the HUD manager reference, and we've gone ahead and set our HUD manager. The next property is the HUD item. This corresponds to the index of the HUD, HUD texture um, array. So first, on this HUD trigger, I'm going to call up element 0, and so I've set it to HUD item 0. The next property on the HUD trigger is HUD fade, and if this box is checked, we are signaling the HUD manager to fade the item. And that is what I would like to do for this example, so I've checked it. The next property is reverse fade, and if this box is checked, it will begin the fade at its set position here, HUD depth, HUD top, HUD left, and then fade it to the fade top and fade left positions, as well as the fade width. In other words, it will simply reverse the fade. The last property on the HUD trigger is reset on trigger, and if this box is checked, it will turn the HUD trigger off and get it ready for reactivation so you can use it over and over again. And that is what I would like to do in this example, so I've had it checked. Let's hit play, and let's hit our HUD manager. We expect HUD element A to fade up from transparent, and there it is. While it's running, I'll go ahead and call up HUD element B. Now you'll notice that it popped HUD element A off. If you do not want that to happen, you can reverse the fade, and it will gradually fade out. Okay, that's the HUD trigger and the HUD manager. The last tool we're going to look at today is the log trigger. The log trigger is designed to send text to the console at runtime. Let's look at the properties. The first one is log string. This is the text that will be sent to the console once this trigger is activated. And for this example, I've, saying, I've said this is from the log trigger. The next property is log on deactivate. And this is text that will be sent to the console when this tool is deactivated. The next property is timestamp. And if this box is checked, the text will be preceded by a number representing seconds from the beginning of the level. The next property is continuous logging. And if this box is checked, the tool will try to log at every frame. The next property is log change only. And if continuous logging is on, the log change only and log change only is on, it will log only the changes from activation or deactivation state. OK, so let's go ahead. Let's hit play. Let's trigger our log trigger and keep an eye on this bottom bar showing the last line of the console. As we trigger it, you'll see it say, this is from the log trigger. And as I deactivate it, it says log trigger out. OK, that's the log trigger. And that's all the time we have for this video. Please stay tuned for the next one.